now through the miracles of modern technology. Zany Worldwide Banner featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim in an on-topic, off-topic free-for-all. Welcome to the Gun Talk After Show. Hey, it's the After Show. We're going to get together and we're going to kind of rehash what happened and talk about things that didn't happen and should have. I don't know what we're going to do. we got Jim over there and then Tom has joined us in the corner. Hey, Tom. Hey, Tom. Okay, so you've been manning the phones today because Michelle is uh, slacking off again. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> nice job of handling yeah. that. But our, our callers are not too tough on you, are they? No, not at all. They're great. I love it. Okay. Well, good deal. All righty. So, Jim, I hear that, uh, well, i tell you what, we will tease it because you ended up having to draw your, your firearm this week, right? Yes, one and a half times. Well, you drew it one and a half times. Okay, yeah. well, we're going to talk about that in just a second here. First, I want to get Gary because he's been on hold for a little while. Hey, Gary, I uh, appreciate you holding. What's up Thanks. here? I'm, I just want to say I went to a gun show in Clovis, California, uh, mm-hmm. which is in the county of Fresno. And the first thing I did, they asked me, do you have a firearm with you? I said, yeah, but I have CCW. Checking your gun or checking the bullets at a gun show. Mm-hmm. So now I'm now it's a gun free now this gun this gun uh, this gun show is a gun free zone now. So everybody's got mm-hmm. guns but no uh, bullets. <laughs> what do you think of that? It's, um, it's very common, and I hate to say this, but I think if I were running a gun show, I might have a similar rule. Let me tell you. Well, let me ask you this: Do you have an idea why they do that? No, I don't understand why. If I'm if I'm a licensed carry, I'm also a CCW instructor, and uh, why would I have to be regulated like that? Okay, I will tell you why. Um, typically, what happens is somebody with a carry permit is looking at guns, looking at holsters. Well, let me try my gun in that holster. Picks up his gun, takes it out, bang. Or I here, see. let me show you. I've got a gun like that. Let me show. Bang. Uh, here's a bang happens at gun shows because some people are not as sharp as you are and they just can't stand to not show people that they, you know, they're born of the club. Uh, I, I can't, can't even count how many people have said to me, oh, I, I, I carry a gun and they have to show it to me. You want to say, no, I should never see it. No one should ever see it if you're doing it right. But that's the reality of it. If you're a gun show operator and you know that this happens with unfortunately sad regularity, you're going to say, okay, we're not going to do that here. We're not going to have you bringing in your gun, loaded gun or ammunition where people are handling guns and pulling triggers all the time. And you know, we're not going to have somebody torch one off. You know, well, fortunately, that makes people- sense, but I still feel that it'd be an ideal place for some terrorists to come in t- Knowing everybody's unarmed to come into a, a gun show. When you not, I'm, not dis- I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you at all on that. I, I don't disagree at all. I'm just saying that this is why it happens. Cool. The other thing is, when they ask you, you do have the option of just not telling the truth. No, I don't have a gun on me. Well, that's what I did. I gave him my 357, my uh, Smith & Wesson Scandium, and then I kept my 22. Uh, 22 North American Magnum in my other pocket. That a boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I like you, Gary. <laughs> you say, look, I, I will play by your rules, but I'm also yeah. not going to go unarmed. I'm complying. <laughs> That's right. You asked for my gun, you, I gave it to you. You didn't lie, did you? You did exactly no, what they asked. <laughs> Gary, my follow-up question for you, Gary, would be, did they have a metal detector? No, they didn't. They didn't want me. They just took our word for it. Sweet. Okay. Well, that's uh, once again, uh, one is none and two is one. So if, because you had two guns on you, you were able to do that and still were not completely defenseless. Now, not that that's like the best gun in the world, except that if it's what you have and it's the only thing you have, it is the best gun in the world. The North American Arms, uh, a little bitty mini revolver, beats the heck out of not having anything. That, that mini revolver 22 Magnum is a heck of a gun. It really not, yeah. has some knockdown power. Yeah, it's not it's not bad at all. I have one of those. I've had one for a gazillion years. Very interesting. But anyway, Gary, that's the background. That's why they have those rules is because, unfortunately, some people just cannot stand to leave it in their holster and leave it you know, covered up. And so that's what happens. So there you go. Then the tech crew's got something for you. Well, thank you. Attaboy! 
Thank you very much. Appreciate that. There you go. All right. The guys in the studio got together on that. You know, you guys almost did that in harmony, which means it wasn't. (laughs) (laughs) Not whatsoever. (laughs) If you're almost on key, you're not. It only works in what? Horseshoes and hand grenades, right? Yeah, there you go. All right. So uh, I tell you what. Let's go ahead and take this break because I don't want to step on your story here, Jim, because Jim has had to pull his gun once and almost pull it another time. we got to hear the story here, so we're going to take a quick break and come back and we're get the background on this. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten-free. At the App Store and Google Play or GunDealio.com. All right, now, Jim, we're back. I, you mentioned to me that not once but twice you reached for your gun this past week. What was the deal? Well, the, the second one was more tragic than the first, but the first one would have, would have been way more tragic had it come to pass. Um, I was with a buddy in a grocery store, and a guy came up and started yelling at him and then just sucker punched him. Whoa. And, I mean, did he know this guy or anything? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he knew him. They had, they had a tiff from, you know, years ago, and he just happened to bump into him and decide that, you know, this was the time and play. And you know, both these guys are near 60. You know, they're ex-tough guys, but it still wouldn't have been pretty. And he sucker punched my buddy and knocked him back for a loop, and I stepped in and let him know there was two of us. Did he really want to proceed with this? Meantime, I got my hand in my under my shirt, let's say, mm-hmm. and uh, he said, yes, I do. <laughs> So I said, well, I still have an option of not shooting somebody because that's the last thing. That's second to last thing I'd want to do is have to shoot somebody. The worst thing would be him shooting me. What happened? So I, uh, I said, okay, I tell you what, because we had two grocery carts full of stuff for a big event we were doing. I said, I tell you what, wait for me in the parking lot because I'm not going to be rude and hold up these other customers. You wait for us. We'll be out there. He said, okay. <laughs> and he went outside. I called the cops. And we went ahead and proceeded, <laughs> went ahead and proceeded to pay for all our stuff. And he's out there, you know. Tapping his fingers, waiting, waiting. He's going to beat us both up. <laughs> and the cops pulled up, and he jumped in his car and drove off. So <laughs> it, it worked out humorous, but it, it could have make, been. Make, make an appointment for a fight, right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> I didn't think it would work, but I think you got to at least try that conversation method. That's, you know? that's pretty good. I, I like that. So I'll tell you what. Yeah, I, I'm, we're going to fight you. You go over there and wait for us. You and me in the playground at 3.30. There you go. Basically, yeah. <laughs> so that, that I'll one, meet you at recess. <laughs> <laughs> that one could, could have been tragic. Thank God it wasn't for everybody involved. Yes. And then uh, last night I had a little issue in my darkened driveway, which you've been to. Mm-hmm. And you know, You're kind I, of in the middle of nowhere out there. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of dark. And I went to do a little dumpster run, and something jumped out at me. <laughs> Scared the bejesus <laughs> out of me. And I should know better because it's happened before. So I opened up the lid and threw a bag in and... All of a sudden, and a big raccoon jumped out at me. <laughs> so, being the brave soul I am, I went, ah! And, and backed up, figuring it would retreat too, and it didn't. It kept sure. coming at me. So I Really? I, yeah. So, that time I did draw, and I gladly uh, discharged. I tried to dispatch the animal, because I don't, you know, you don't know if it's a rabbit or whatever. It just... Well, yeah, you, exactly. When they don't retreat, they're attacking, is the way I looked at it. Mm-hmm. I discharged yes. three, three rounds at him. And two of them, I'm confirmed, hit him. And I think I did something to the rear of the animal because he just dragged himself into the woods away from me, what, thinking what this gun? is no fun. A little LCP. So a little you, Ruger LCP 380. Yep, I always have that. It's you know sometimes it's my second, but sometimes it's the primary. Well, as uh, somebody at Ruger said, hey, it's the gun you carry when you can't carry a gun. 
Right. 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 And, and I mean, it sounds like it's being derogatory, but it actually is a pretty good description of what the LCP is about. Right. Right. I mean, it, if, if it's all you have, I'd rather have that than a sharp stick. So, Okay. okay. Yeah. And just for those who might not know, uh, rabies is not at all uncommon in raccoons. I have had to dispatch a rabid raccoon before, so mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yep. If they're acting weird or if they're coming at you, in this case, you know, it could have been just a reflex defensive mechanism, but you don't know. And it's right. uh, you really don't want to find out the hard way that he had rabies and you got bit. Right. And I even, after I, I shot him, I felt bad because I know I didn't kill him right away. So I decided to get a bright flashlight <laughs> and a uh, Glock and, <laughs> and looking for him. And I, I couldn't find him. I, I'm sure he perished, but I, I wanted it to end right. quickly for him. But I never could find him. So, But uh, it was weird. I, I, I've been charged once be- 30 years ago by a raccoon, and it was, uh, it was reminiscent of that. It's, it's not something you want to get attacked how, by. How are you carrying? Pocket holster. Okay, you had that. Your, now, have you gone back and analyzed how quickly you were able to get that gun out, or not, not so quickly? How did it work? Uh, I was able to get the um, the pistol out of my shorts before I wet them. <laughs> That's not what you're asking. Which, is, which really is immaterial. It doesn't really matter if you wet before or after. Good night. Right. Uh, no, actually, I didn't really think, but just it was kind of second nature. I'm so used to, to mm-hmm. pulling out and putting it in when I get dressed. It wasn't it wasn't a, a big deal. I didn't have any limp wrist draw on it or anything. It was I reached, grabbed, pulled. Interesting. I'm, I'm reminded of a story told by a friend of mine who is a police officer, has a longtime police officer. He shot, had shot had shoot a woman, oh. and uh, <clears throat> but the description I won't go into all the details. But it, he said. When she started coming at him with the knife, there were several police officers around and said it was like she started coming at him and then he realized that she was on the ground and he had shot and his other officers were saying, it's okay, she's down, uh, you can put the gun away. Just like instantly. Because he was a gun guy and he practices a lot. He's very competent. Mm-hmm. And everybody else was caught off guard, didn't see it coming. They thought she was, you know, they had experience with her in the past. She's kind of uh, probably mentally challenged. But when she jumped up and came at him with a knife, he immediately just shot her, did what he had to do. I mean, and we're talking probably just a couple of feet off the muzzle. Wow. So mm-hmm. it's only like a half second but Just deal. one of those deals. Kind of like you're talking about, just all of a sudden the gun was in my hand and I was doing what I had to do. And I don't know how it got there, but here we are. Yeah, I never analyzed it like that. I just, you know, I didn't want to get bit and said, what can I do to prevent it? And I wasn't going to kick it. And yeah. I, I knew I had that. So it was worth a sh- worth a shot, he said, punningly. It's worth a shot. Yeah. Well, once again, a three eighty, you know, may not be a roll them over and blow them 10 feet back, but does the job that you you had it for. Yeah. And like I said, it's, it's often, I mean, it's always my second gun. Occasionally, it's my primary, depending on <clears throat> wardrobe and, you know, where you're going, et cetera. Mm-hmm. But we had, we, had an event, we had an event the other night, and there were four of us, and I kind of looked around on stage and said, wow, how cool. Everybody has their carry permits. I was like, <laughs> this is a well-protected stage. <laughs> the boys in the band. Yeah, it was cool. It was neat. It wasn't like, you know, we're badass. It just, you know, no. we're, just, we're just the same guys we always have been, but now everybody is, is being responsible. I'm yeah, getting there. You're getting there. So yeah. how, how's it going, Tom? I'm looking, really looking forward to this holiday weekend um, because I'm going to visit a friend of mine that owns a gun shop, oh, and he is going to let me try out a bunch of stuff that he's got in his store. We'll go out to the range, and uh, uh, I can play around and see what I like and what feels good and mm-hmm. decide what I should think about carrying. So you're looking for something to carry, not just a house mm-hmm. gun, but actually carry. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's always the great compromise. It's, you know, do I carry a, a full-size gun, which has everything I need in it, but it's just uncomfortable, or a little bitty mm-hmm. pocket gun like Jim has, which, you know, has almost nothing I am looking for. It just has the bare minimum, but it's e- easy enough to carry, or somewhere in that middle, which is probably in the middle is the, the sweet spot. Yeah, and I know I'm going to be hearing your voice in my head say, go ahead, buy both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, what, what's your phone number? I'll go ahead and just text that to you now. You'll we'll have, we'll have it on loop for you. It's called, it's called Tom Delio. Do it. Do it. Yeah, Contact you. Just, you. Just do it. Just do it. Odd hours just in the morning. It. It's only money. It's just, you don't even have to pay for it. Just put it on the card. It's okay. Well, the other option, too, you know, Tom Hennig, is 
a friend of yours has several pistols. He would probably lend you a few to see what works <laughs> best for you. <laughs> Somebody in the studio this, with him at the moment? Yeah. This, yeah, so, this aforementioned moments. friend, um, yeah, is he uh, in a close vicinity right now? Yes, he is. Okay. Yes, he is. I'll introduce you after no. the after show. <laughs> so, so there you go. I mean, this could, this could happen. I mean, that's a good so, method because that way you don't have to commit financially. Uh, and mm-hmm. it's the same offer I made to a couple other guys and they've taken me up on it. And that way, you know, you kind of see and, and you may not buy any of those, but you may say, yeah, those are cool. Thanks. But I ended up buying X, Y, Z. But mm-hmm. it's, it's a way to try and, and see what works now, for you before you commit. Tom, have you got have you taken the class? Have you gotten your permit yet? I've taken the class. I've not gotten the permit yet. <gasps> Tom. Okay, and... Uh, yeah, this yes. is the part where you ask me why I have yes. not applied yet. Um, yes. I guess since I don't have the gun to carry yet, I wasn't in a hurry. Aha. Uh-huh. Now, I don't know if it, what it is in Ohio, but in some states there is a period of time after which your class is no longer valid and you have to go back and take the class again. I think Michelle said it was three years. Oh, okay. Well, that's a pretty long time. Yeah. I think it's a year here. Yeah, you'll be carrying by then, so. or you will be unemployed. You're working. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, here's the thing. Go ahead and get the paperwork in, because that takes a while for it to go through. And in the meantime, uh, you could be looking at guns. You could be trying guns. And rather do that than wait until you find the gun you want. Now you have to put in your paperwork. And what's the uh, the lead time running now in Ohio for your, your permit? I've been told it kind of depends on which county you go to. Some of them, uh, you can get it expedited a little easier mm-hmm. than others. Some of them will stall you. Yeah, in, yeah, in, in, our, in our county, it's it's about 30 days, and they have to issue it to you. And they're calling you on the okay. 28th day. But adjacent, okay. adjacent counties, you make an appointment like a week or two out, and literally it's a 15-minute process. You walk in, they're expecting hmm. you, boom, boom, boom. They must do a pre-check, <sighs> I'm guessing. They do a pre-check yeah, on you. So yeah, yeah. Hmm. exactly. Okay. Well, I would say put the paperwork in, and when you get it, um, certainly if you want to buy a gun, go ahead and get one. But understand that you do have access to loaners, which you could try it, you know, and figure out which one you like. And that's that's a pretty interesting idea. And everybody actually has, well, most people have friends. You say, well, look, would it be okay with you? I borrowed this gun, even carried it for a while. Some people may or may not be okay with that, but if they are okay with it, then you could actually try before you buy. That's a good idea, because then it actually gives me a chance to wear it around and see how comfortable it's really going to be. Or not. Yep. Or not. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and a lot of that is the holster, and a huge part of it, and you've heard me talk about this, is the belt. Uh, The Mm -hmm. belts that you currently own are not good enough, unless you are already wearing a gun belt. So, I mean, they just are not. So, you, you need to spend real money on a belt that's made for guns and it will make the whole system more comfortable Uh, because a a crummy belt even a a little gun could be uncomfortable with a good belt you can carry a larger gun which will do the job for you and still be comfortable now tom you may think this is a little over the top but it's something i do anyway Um, every time i lend a friend a gun i actually have him sign for it serial number model picture the drivers just like i was selling it to him in the event hmm. it gets stolen from them, or they were, you know, I misjudged my buddy yep. and they did something stupid. I want to have some kind that's, of some kind of protection. Yeah. That's not actually a bad idea. Oh, have them leave their car with you or something. That'd be cool. <laughs> Firstborn <laughs> kid, yeah. Firstborn, you know, there's some of those I don't want, you know. <laughs> yeah, good point. Yeah. So no, just, I've seen your kid. No, don't leave him here, okay? <laughs> Jeez. Nice. <laughs> oh, boy. The other thing is that if you sell a gun to somebody... I wouldn't sell a gun to someone who I couldn't get his information, a copy of the driver's license, and a signed bill of sale. And part of that is a statement from him that says, I am not a prohibited person. Yep. Unless I'm somebody I knew well, you know. Like, yeah, you know, see, I do it with my friends. I've had friend, lifelong friends. I still go through it. And I said, hey, business is business. And it's yeah, not, but, it's but if there's somebody you met on Craigslist, that's different, you know. Yeah, you know, like Craigslist friends. guys are all good. Oh, sure. He said he wasn't a felon. I believed him. We had we had the local guy who sold a gun to somebody on Craigslist. Met him in a parking lot, and the guy stole his gun. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yeah, what could go wrong, right? Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to bring a gun for you in a secluded place. Yeah, trust yeah. everybody immediately. Why not? Yeah, 
That's right. I, that, that's when you when you do that though. You have a buddy go be high cover. He's like on a building with a sniper rifle. Sure. So well, I have that all the time anyway. <laughs> well, that's true. It's it's be prepared. You know, I keep a, a, a under my hat. I have a squirrel with a very small Thompson machine gun. <laughs> There's a visual image for you. <laughs> Shoots point zero four five. Right, that's right. I, I've never, gun. I've never sold a gun to anybody I didn't know very, very well. I mean, I, I don't can't see myself putting an ad in the paper and selling yeah. something to somebody well, I don't know. Well, for one thing, you, you let the world know, the, the general world know. Hey, I'm here. This is where I live, and I have guns. I don't think I want to be doing that. Right. Well, a lot of people don't think that that stuff through. Yeah, think. <laughs> <laughs> the, what's the, the, the crime report where it says, uh, let's see, she accepted a ride from a guy she'd never met at 3 o'clock in the morning coming home from a bar. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, we may have a, a problem with judgment here. I'm just saying. <laughs> Part of this, though, is a, an awareness thing. I'm thinking about, and of course, you know Ryan mm-hmm. and his, his lovely wife, who is now... A graduate of you know, Clint Smith's Thunder Ranch and could shoot and all of that. But when they were dating, uh, they were at a bar and there was a fight started. And everybody was moving in to see the fight. And she was, too. And he grabbed her and says, come on, we're getting out of here. What do you mean? And he was dragging her out the door thinking, you know, right now it's a fist fight. But I don't know what it's going to be in the next 30 seconds. Right. It could be a mob. Yeah. It could be a mob or it could be a shooting. Yep. So it was one of those, if you haven't ever thought about it, you'd react one way. But if you've actually thought and trained... You go, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. So it's, it's the old deal of, where was it they had, I guess it's happened more than once, uh, had a fire in a bar because they had pyrotechnics for the band. Great white show. Yeah, yeah. Great white show. And people actually thought it was part of the act and were moving t- forward to see the whole show as the place is starting to catch fire. Yeah, they yeah. going, you know, t- time to turn and get out. And, well, I haven't paid my bar bill. Well, then you can come back later and deal with that. Mm. You know, I haven't paid for my meal. We'll worry about that later, but there's something funky going on up at the front, and we're going out the kitchen. Come on, family, let's go. Yeah, I never had that allure to, you know, oh, there's trouble. Well, let's see what's happening. It's like, I don't want nothing to do with any of that. It's like the schoolyard fights. Everybody gets around, fight, fight, fight. Yeah. yeah. Nah, I don't want to be there, especially not when... You don't know the players, and you don't know if they're going to limit it to fist or if they're going to start doing something else. Yeah, and exactly. A hundred people died at the Great White Show, wasn't it? There was a lot of people. Wasn't I it? Two don't, or three. A lot. I don't remember the number. Yeah, yeah no, it was a lot. And that, I think they had the whole deal with the doors being locked for security to keep people from passing, you know, going out and coming back in or letting their friends in. So all the exits were locked, mm. which is another thing, you know. Have you checked? Do the exits actually work? I've never actually done that. Yeah, I don't. I, don't I see the exit sign, but I've, I've never done that. But you know, It'd be interesting. The other thing security is, walks up to you and says, well, "What are you doing? I want to make sure I can get out of here if I have to." Yeah, does this actually yeah. work, or do you have it chained, locked? Okay. Of course. Now, for the, another way to remember, you have to kind of always be thinking about this. If you're in a restaurant or some place like that, and you can't get out the back, and there's something going on in the front, and you know you need to leave. All that glass that we call windows, mm-hmm. those are exits, too. Mmm. Mmm. Yeah. And the chair does wonders against one of those. As does a 9 millimeter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if, you know, don't shoot straight, but if you if you had to pop the top corners out to break it loose, now you could throw a chair through it. Because a chair may or may not go through some windows. True, yeah, tempered and stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah so you go, okay, well, I... I I don't know if I want to do that. The only thing that matters is, did I get out alive? We will discuss the issues that you know involved that later. Yeah, but right now, we need to get my family out of here right now. I'd be proud to scamper through the kitchen, running, hightailing so it. through the kitchen. I'll go where, you know, wherever I have to go. <laughs> it's like all the movies where people are chasing. They always chase people through the kitchens, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're always running through the kitchens with the cooks and all going, oh, what's going on? The bad guy, good guy, the whole thing. Jim, this is no time to grab french fries. Keep moving. Mmm. <laughs> Escargot. No, no. Guy, go faster than that. Okay. It's a snail. <laughs> I don't know. No, I said we got to go. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got to go. No. Escargot. Oh, okay. Well, that brings us back so, to the stuff you and I always do, and I'm sure Tom does too. You walk into a restaurant, I mean, you size the place up, and it's not... You know, my friends that don't do it, they God, you must be really paranoid. I'm, no, I was a Boy Scout, and I wasn't over-prepared. I was prepared, and now as an adult, well, chronologically an adult, 
I, I want to know my surroundings. I want to know where's my path of egress. If feces hits the proverbial air uh, ventilation device, I want to be able to boogie. I don't think well, it it's a, a, it's, it's a mindset deal. It really is. I, uh, I have a personal locator beacon, a PLB, that I carry with mm-hmm. me when I'm off and about. And when I set that off, it actually triggers a satellite rescue system. Mm-hmm. And it has GPS built in so that the rescuers will know where to go. They just put those coordinates into the helicopter to come pick us up. And, uh, I've shown that to a number of people. They go, wow. I said, well, you know, do you ever go hiking? Well, yeah. Do you ever go out in a boat in a lake? Yeah. Um, are you ever out of cell phone? Yeah. Well, with this, you're not. Yeah, or your cell so phone gets wet. 250 bucks. This thing works whether it's wet or not. They will send the cavalry. That's it? 250 get... Yeah, about I 250 thought, bucks. Oh, I thought they were huh? over a grand. Oh, they've, no, they've come down a lot. So it's small enough to go in a, in a uh, pants pocket. or I mean, they're, they're, they're really not very yeah. big now. So it's probably about a quarter of the cost if you false alarm it, what they're going to bill you. Oh, no, no. If you, if you false alarm it, it's going to be a uh, five-digit bill. Oh. 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 Well, look, if they send a helicopter out to get you and you said, well, uh, Sorry, I was dude. tired. I, you know, and people have done this. Well, I was really we hiked all the way in, but I was really tired. I wasn't sure if I could make it back. Yeah, okay. Well, here's a thirty-five thousand dollar bill. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you don't want to. Do, well, have you ever? Do you know what it costs to get medevaced out someplace? If you need thirty-five a, grand, uh, I'm guessing. Yeah, it can be twenty, thirty, forty wow. grand Holy for God. the medevac bill. Uh, you know, and if you need it, you need it. That's one thing. But just just saying. False alarms, mm. you don't want to be doing that when it involves yeah. Coast Guard or people like that. No doubt. I'd look, wow. I'd, I'd look into that, though, because I do a lot of hiking. You do, yeah. That'd yeah. be See, smart for you. It is it is. You just really want company good or something? Of mine. <laughs> You're bored or no, uh, <laughs> a- ACR is one of the big companies. There are several good, good companies. I'll tell you the website to go to for all this information. It's you know our friend Doug Ritter from Knife Rights. Yeah. He has a website he's had long before Knife Rights called Equipped to Survive, and it's equipped.org, E-Q-U-I-P-P-E-D, equipped.org. Got it. And Doug is like an expert on this stuff. He tests POBs and life rafts and signal mirrors and laser signal devices and all this stuff. Not like a survivalist, but survival stuff. Uh, Gee, and so guess, he'll have That's what I'm doing there. right now, Tom. Are you on the website? Yes. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, Equipped to Survive, it's a really good website. Uh, but, yeah, the a PLB, and some people say, well, I have a spot, and those are okay. They do things, and they, they actually do things that this won't do. But none of them actually signal the true rescue people like a true personal locator beacon PLB does. And it has a GPS built in, and they have that unit linked to you, to your information, so when they get it, they will call home and they'll say, well, you know, we're getting a signal from Tom's uh, POB right now. Is he home? Well, no, he's out hiking such and such a deal. They said, well, that's where it's coming from. So this must be the real thing. Gotcha. Uh, we'll send somebody out. Ah. Huh. Yeah. Pretty cool, huh? I like that. Well, their phrase is it takes the search out of search and rescue. Oh, that's kind of catchy. Kind of catchy because they know, I mean, if they... Helicopter takes off. They've got your GPS coordinates to within 10 feet. They punch it in. They just fly there. Boom. There you are. How cool. So, yeah, PLB. If you're a boater, a hiker, a hunter, uh, wildlife, whatever, if you go off-road, go anywhere like that, or for that matter, imagine you were driving in a lot of parts of the country in the winter. You got Uh snowed in or flipped a car or whatever, and you're off the road. Nobody's coming to get you. Your cell phone's not working. You could flip that and help's a coming. Yeah, you just get off the road into a <laughs> pond or something. Or, mm-hmm. or, or in a snow down. drift yeah. in the backwoods. Now, do they auto- automatically go by air or would they call local sheriff? No, uh, not automatically. Uh, they'll just figure out how can we best get there. Gotcha. Okay. Wow, so, that's good. Yeah, that's, but that's, going back to what you said, it's part of that overall be prepared, Take care. make sure I'm going to take care of myself and my family attitude of, you know, uh, do you carry in the winter, do you carry blankets and a sleeping bag in your car just in case you break down somewhere? Well, yeah, I do. Ever since I've lived in Alaska, I've just kind of gotten in that habit of you never know. He said, well, I'm only going 20 miles up the road. Okay, great. There's a huge wreck. You're trapped in the middle of it, and you need to sit there for five hours while they clear everything off. Oh, never thought of that. 
just stuff. Just just think and think about the what ifs and what can I carry. Uh, you know, do you carry water with you? Do you carry stuff in your car, blankets, just on and on? Yes, I'm ignoring uh, you yeah. because I'm. it's exactly what I'm doing. I'm looking at the McMurdo Fast Find PLB. <laughs> there you go. Um, check Doug's ratings on those because some of them are better than others, sure. shall I say, without uh, casting a spur. Yeah, this is a whole article about it. It's given his, his take on it and options, yep. and it's cool. Good. Yeah, and he's a good writer. Uh, I do love that website, Equipped to Survive. It's equipped.org. Yeah. Yeah. For those who have that same mindset of, I want to make sure I have the good stuff because only the good stuff's going to save you. I don't want to get let down by crummy stuff. Uh, whether it's a signal mirror, well, you know, I always have a, a whistle, a Fox 40 whistle on my keychain. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I go out anywhere, fly my airplane or any place, I have the Doug Ritter designed, uh, what do they call it, a pocket survival pack. I think it's 29 bucks. And it's got signal mirrors and a bunch of other stuff, and it will quite literally go into a shirt pocket. It's that small. Now you use that whistle at, like the opera, etc. Kind of annoy I do, I do. And when, when, during the quiet passages, yeah, yes, it's probably a hell of a lot more interesting. <laughs> well, one thing it does is it always gets, it allows me to leave. Now the big burly guys who are helping me leave is a whole different. Issue. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, just, nice. it's, I'm getting bored here. I'd like to leave, so I'll blow my whistle. No, for, it's, uh, it's a great tool. And don't forget flashlights, because a lot of people just, just don't even until they don't have one. They go, oh, I need a light. I'll use my cell phone. Really. So I looked in my little backpack that I carried my computers in the other day. I had five flashlights. <laughs> it's always, well, do I have a lot? I don't know. I'll just throw one in there. Now, I, I tell you what I did have in there that was really handy, and everybody's going to make fun of me. I had a headlamp, you know, the kind with the elastic yeah. strap that goes around your head. Yep. I needed to do something, and I had to have two hands to put that thing on, and now I'm good to go, and I don't have to try to hold the flashlight in my teeth, which I've done more times than I can count. Yeah, we, we don't need that to make fun of you, Tom. Trust me. Oh, okay. A photon hmm. is what I'm looking at right now on Doug's site. Don't tell yeah. Gresham. Don't tell Gresham I'm really not working. I'm screwing around. <laughs> He's got a little, a little photon uh, keychain <laughs> light. Just a little pocket light hangs from your keychain. Yep. It's super bright. How cool. You've corrupted yeah, me, Gresham. It is kind of cool. I know. It is cool. It, you'll find it'll cost you money. It's okay, but it's, Thanks, it's good Tom. stuff. <laughs> EQ, let me see, E-Q-U-I, P-P-E-D. if I could spell, I'd be dangerous, oh, P-P-E-D yeah. dot O-R-G. Okay, there it is, equipped to survive. And he also has all these cool knives, and he designs knives. My everyday carry knife is a Doug Ritter design knife. It's made by Benchmade, but it's got a different, a little bit different blade, a little heavier blade. Uh, so I really like those. So just kind of a heads up for people who are interested in this stuff, you'll find you will spend time on this site because you're going, oh. Will. <laughs> uh, PLBs, uh, laser distress signals. He's not a fan, uh, by the way, of flares because they don't work that well and they can't set the woods on fire. Yeah, I was just mm-hmm. going to say that. The, uh, the laser. Those are, those are generally pointers. best used at sea. The, oh, the pyrotechnics, yes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, let them fall into the water. Exactly right. But although you will attract attention if you set the whole woods on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a flare gun, and I just wish I had a you do an right. excuse or in a safe place to use it <laughs> over the lake. <laughs> Got to get you out in the boat, man. So, oh, I'll tell you there, a, a quick story. A uh, fellow who taught me to fly tail dragger airplanes in Alaska also taught survival to the game wardens there. And they put on this class. Ray Tremblay was his name. Real interesting guy, uh, a bush pilot kind of guy. He said, "Yeah, he says we would have this class. We'd have them all on a boat. They'd done the classroom stuff, and they had this overnight." deal and uh we would have them in the boat would be about a quarter mile offshore and they all had survival suits the water's cold he said he'd blow a whistle he says the boat just caught on fire you have 60 seconds to get out and they have to put on their survival suits and anybody that's not done by then he's picking them up and throwing them out of the boat into the cold water i mean just throwing them out there they're gonna hit the water cold too bad boat burned up and then they're all in the water and he said yo there's the island he says, we're going to be back tomorrow. He says, if we don't see a signal, because I'm not sure how close we're going to come to the island. If we don't see a, a signal, he says, we're not coming. And so they all had to swim in, survive overnight on this island. He says, when they came back the next day, it looked like the island was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the tricks that they would use that he taught, and you don't want to do this most places, people, because you really can seriously set the whole woods on fire. You could start a huge fire. 
but if it's uh, certain places, it was okay. They would climb up a tree, take a can of gasoline up into the tree, set it up there, and run a string down. Uh, they prefer it to be a tree that's isolated from all other trees. And then when a plane, this was only in Alaska, when a plane would come by, they would pull the string, dump the gasoline that would pour through the entire big conifer, you know, mm-hmm. pine tree or whatever it was, and then set the whole thing on fire. Hmm. So now you have this whole what could this possibly 50, go wrong with that? <laughs> fifty <laughs> foot high torch going off. Yeah, what could go wrong there? As we look at all of the video of the huge wildfires yeah. going on, right? Yeah, or gas all over yourself. Yeah, which is why I think maybe the laser signal device is a better way to go. Uh, always yes. thinking, much less likely to set the world and yourself on fire. It's mm. not nearly as exciting, though. <laughs> well, there is that. And just think of all the friends you make uh, when you set the woods on but fire. But you won't make the news. <laughs> yeah, really. So, all right. Well, I think we have covered that. I just, it's, once again, we get back to the whole, it's a mindset thing. It's a, have you thought about this stuff? What if, and then when? You know, when this happens, I will do this. And then I would say, always apply three levels to it. When that doesn't work, then what am I going to do? And then when that doesn't work, then what am I going to do? Because you have to assume that whatever the, you do first is not going to work. Right. Hence I told you that what Clint Smith said that one time. He's talking about the self-defense shooting. He said, said, the difference between me and you guys, he says, when you envision your gunfight, what you see in your mind is that everything you do works perfectly and the bad guy gets shot and falls down. He says, when I see a gunfight in my head, everything I do does not work. And then I have to come up with another plan. And then that's not going to work. So then I have to come up with another plan. He says, that's the difference. And, of course, this is from a guy who's been in gunfights. There he is. Yeah, no doubt. Guy yeah. knows his stuff, huh? Yeah, there are, oh man, there, you know what, there are a lot of good trainers uh, now. They're coming out of the military. They're coming out of the police departments. They're, and some of them are just people who have been students of this for a long time. So they're, they're good trainers everywhere. People always ask me for recommendations. I don't know. There's so many now. You just have to look around and look at credentials and yeah, talk to people who've been to the classes. But the flip side of that is there's also a lot of guys calling themselves trainers that aren't very good. I'm an yes. instructor. I'm an instructor. Well, can you teach, you know, tactics? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a CCW instructor. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I started to say that with one of our callers. I'm a CCW instructor. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That's not impressive by itself. Having watched some concealed carry instructors totally screw up on our first person defender show yep so you know i would look at backgrounds what what have you done who have you worked for how long you been doing this talk to other people who've been in the classes but also ask those people have you been to any other classes because the first one of these you go to you're going to think it's fabulous because you've never been exposed to it before but if you've been to three or four other classes now you have a basis for comparison yeah well see you spoiled me on that the first, How's that? first training I got was with Destin and, and Greg. And Greg. Oh, the Vatican. Yeah. yeah. You got about the best you could get. No yeah, kidding. It's, like, it's all downhill from here. I remember you kind of had that deer in the headlights look when you watched how these guys worked and how fast they could run those guns. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Right. Right. And, I, and I thought I was pretty gun conscious. He says, well, I can tell you've handled a gun before. He's very diplomatic about it. <laughs> he didn't say, Jim, you suck. He said, yeah, well, he said, you've handled a gun, a gun before, I can tell. He says, something you may want to take into consideration is when you drive. And he told me what I was doing wrong. And, you know, mm-hmm. it could be viewed by some people as minor, but I kind of like to keep both my feet. So his, <laughs> his jaw stroke was much better than mine. And, and uh, you know, finger off the trigger. He said, all the, he, he was a good instructor because he pointed out what I was doing right. It wasn't just like, you're doing this wrong. You're doing that. He says, mm-hmm. you know, you, you've got a clue, but here's what we need to work on. I was like, I'm all ears, man. You obviously know what you're doing. That, that's a guy that knows how to teach. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, yeah. And by the way, if you're going to a class and you're getting yelled at all the time, it might be time to leave. Yep. Amen. Just I mean, amen. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> and with that, we're off. You guys have a great week. Be safe. You too. All right. Be good. Tell your friends about the Gun Talk After Show, a more informal setting featuring Tom, Michelle, and Jim commenting on topics that are important to you. Available on iTunes and other podcatchers and the Gun Dealio smartphone app for iPhone and Android.